Today I will be making a base because uh, my charming uh, lady friend here is uh, Madam President of the Broward County Shell Club. They collect shells and educate people about the shells in our area and around the world. So she's got a few thousand of them around the house and most of them are just sitting on a shelf and I thought why not make a nice base out of some of the coral which we find on our beach, the Gorgonian. They call it black coral, but when it's living, it's not actually black. It has kind of a light purple coating on it with the, the live animal lives in. And uh, you can bend this coral. All you have to do is soak it, get it wet, and it becomes very pliable. You can tie it in knots, and then once it's dry, it stays there. But first, I'm going to make a base I have uh, just a regular piece of bottle brush pearl. I already drilled a hole in the top where the center is going to be. <laughs> I can do that hole on the lathe or off the lathe. I just took it, put it in the drill press, and kind of eyeballed the center. This will be the bottom, up about here where the white, not the whitest, but almost. And uh, you'll see as I go along. So I drilled the hole, I have a Stebbs center, or a Stebbs type center, which uh, Don has three of these for sale over here. Has a springy center point and teeth all the way around. And when these first came out, I wasn't too hot on them, but after Larry bought one and, uh, for 65 bucks, and I used it a few times, <coughs> and, uh, that thing is really cool. So I got one myself. So the floating stuff gets tied up straight, and then the teeth take over. Yeah, yeah. Well, that chocolate all over again. That chocolate. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put the center hole in the center hole here, and eyeball this side. I did lock the wheels. You're just strong like strong like bull. Bull of the Okay, just checking to make sure everything's good. So the speed down. I like wearing a dust mask or a respirator. And for today's demo, I will be having a dust mask on because you can hear me better. Who is that masked man? Should always wear safety protection. I said you're doing the front row. Yeah, especially. <laughs> this is a burl off the bottle brush tree. The bark is really interesting. It's got layers of uh, tan and a reddish color. And uh, I, I really like the way that looks. So I'm going to just start off with the bowl gouge, the branch, the, the branch that we need to put some dowels right here. Just drill a hole, glue a dowel in it, it prevents that from happening. Uh, the, the tree branch is lined up this way, the burl, the figure is just, and the grain is crazy, it goes every direction. So basically, we should be turning down from larger diameter to smaller when the fibers are lined up with the bed of the lathe. Cross grain, we should turn smaller diameter to larger. It's also called side grain. You come from the side. Thin grain or spindle turning, larger to smaller, side grain, smaller to larger. It's an important distinction to know. So I just want to rough it out. I need to make a tenon on this end to go into chuck. It dulls it a little when it falls on the concrete. These bases are very simple to make.
have my tenon. There's some bark in the tenon, so I'm going to make it a little bit longer. And I'm using a parting tool to make the tenon, and I see it all the time. People are pointing the parting tool at the center of your turning. This is a bevel. You're supposed to be pointing your parting tool up and cutting like that. It works a whole lot better. <coughs> Instead of pointing there, up here, you get better chips off it. Here, you have to fight it more. It doesn't work as well. Now my tenon for this little apprentice mini chuck, this will go down and grab, but you put a one inch dowel in here. My tenon just needs to be straight. There's no dovetail on it. The, this surface here should be fitting on top of the jaw. You don't want to just make a tenon and have this bottom touching in here with nothing sitting on top of the jaw. That's not very strong. I want to show you something you can do with this center. There's three of these over in that box for 20 bucks. <coughs> so you can have delays running. And you can back this off and then that springy point kicks out. You can stop and look at your piece. Let go and turn right back on. I make beer tap handles for a brewery. And I cut the blanks about 10 inches because the tap handle is 9 and 7 eighths. And I put them between centers. I have a rectangular square blank and I mark the ends and did a centering hole with a punch. And I don't even shut the lid. <coughs> I use this center. I put, put it on the little springy point it's sticking out here. It's not touching the teeth. It's not going to start spinning. I put this in the other hole. I let go of it. It starts spinning slowly. And then I just tighten that up. Rough them out. Do a tenon on one end. Take it off while it's still running. Because uh, then you could just loosen it a little bit. It's not touching. I could just remove it. Take my next one. Put it on. Get it in there. Let go of it, tighten it up. These are really interesting centers. From the first few times you try that, you wear a face shield. <laughs> <laughs> or make sure your face is over a little bit. Yeah, I'll take that one. This one's mine. Well, I'm buying one. Well, you're buying one? I'm going to buy one. There's one there. <clears throat> Who do I give the money to? Uh, Don, right there. Right beside me. Chuck. And always give that chuck a spin so it locks on. Don't just go up and do that because it's not on there firmly. I turned the lathe on and then went like that and had that chuck come spinning off and fly over at me. So you want to make sure it's locked on there. Putting something in the chuck, try not to hold it like that. Try and hold it from the center on the end, and then it'll be flush up and it'll run a lot truer. If you're holding it from the side, a lot of times you're holding it at a little angle, and that chuck will grab that. <clears throat> now, the hole on my base does not need to be dead center. I don't even need one at this point. I can turn the whole piece without the hole being there and just drill one anywhere I want for on the drill press or with the hand drill for something like this. So I do want to leave bark on the edge. I'm going to bring the base up a little bit or not. It's just something I can uh, 
wing it as I go and have a look at it. Another thing, always spin the wood completely around before you turn the machine on. Is that, to make, is that to make the wood dizzy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want the termites warmed up before you get them too dizzy. They start walking around and crashing into stuff. Okay, I'm going to crank the speed up a little. Look. I was going to say, that, that's my only, the, the only thing I don't like about those centers. Yeah. They'll, they'll dig into the wood and, and uh, you end up having to tighten it and it just in for a Yeah, and they're, they're not for big pieces either. They're for smaller pieces. Hey Dave, how much time we got left? What? <laughs> Dave Piper. <laughs> now these bobble brush burls are very interesting. This one was growing on a bigger branch, about that big. A lot of times there's ones this size, they're just, you, I've had them that big, like a big grapefruit, growing on a branch as skinny as a pencil. Wow. It's like a big grapefruit covered in bark, and inside, wonderful burl wood. All the bottle brush trees around here are infected and have these growing on them. There's bigger ones on the big chunk, and I have three hats on order so anybody who gets a, like a 17 inch bottle brush burl, I need it. So. For a free lesson at least. Yeah. Even two. Oh. Yeah. I, I did, uh, I had my own booth at the Shell Show this past weekend up in Pompano. And, Shell but, Show by the heat store? Yeah. And I was selling these stands. I had several that I didn't have time to finish. So I just brought the base with the hole in it. And I sold six of those. And uh, I wore my wood hat, which I forgot to bring, and I got ordered for two hats. So now I need to get the wood. Now, you new people, don't just watch the wood spinning, watch whoever's mentoring you, how they're moving their body. Yeah, I got the tool up against me, and I'm moving like that. I can still go up and down, roll it left and right, do some little movements, but you, your arms out here and doing things like that, all these muscles are tense. If you're relaxed here and just moving your body, you don't use as much energy, you have better control. Now I'm just looking to see what this looks like. I think I'll cut it down a little lower. Dropping this where it bounced and hit the point really affected me. Trying my spindle gouge. <clears throat> yeah, we were at one demonstration and uh, I won't mention any names. Or Carl Spindler, he, he was turning a piece of Norfolk and it had the knot sticking out a little bit. And he went like that and turned the lathe on and it spun around and one of those knots stuck out and hit the tool rest right on the end and snapped it off. That's why you spin it every time completely just to see what's going on. Snap the tool rest? Yeah, broke it right off right there. The same tool rest. That knot spun around from down here, come up, wham! I, I broke my big 12 inch one on my automatic Ouch. doing that.
And another thing to think about, when I, when I started turning, I like to hold my tool up here. That, that's right on the soft part of my belly. So what happens when I breathe? That tool moves. If you think about it, when your arm is fully extended and up here where you comfortably stop, halfway between there is right here on your hip bone. This doesn't move. You can put the handle there, your hand, your wrist, your forearm, just relax down at your side, moving like that. It makes a big difference. And if you're halfway, you've got a lot of room that you can come up and down. If you're starting up here and your piece is getting smaller, you've got to raise it up higher, getting you more out of balance and you lose the control you had to make the tool and make the cuts you want. So, and new people, sharpen your tools five times more than you do. To learn how to do it, and everything works better with sharp tools. Up in Palm Beach, where they do the workshops up there, uh, Bruce, who's in charge of it, it's at his shop, every 20 minutes, a timer goes off. He goes, okay, everybody, go sharpen the tool you got in your hand. So. The, the sharper these are, the better the cuts you can do. Like I, I have a really good cut. There's one little line right here. That's just green, but this is 220 grit sanding or maybe 400 grit sanding. So when you learn to use the tools, you can get really good finishes. You're not over sanding and changing the actual shape of your piece. Okay, now I want to go in with the parting tool, kind of shorten this up and square up the bottom because I, I like the shape that this is. And I just drilled a uh, 3 16 hole in here just to do that. The actual size of the piece of coral varies. A lot of times this stuff is not round and you can adjust the hole with a drill, a little Dremel. You can grind the base of this off a little bit and make it fit in a hole right. And I always epoxy these in. I don't CA glue structural things in. Like a finial on a lid, I, I won't CA glue that in. I would use some kind of epoxy or a good wood glue. And uh, if you're doing a finial, <clears throat> the, the part that goes in to the hole I always put a couple little grooves on that when I'm making the, the tenon that's going to fit inside here. That way the glue has somewhere to fit inside there. And if it's a bigger opening, I will put a couple little notches inside the hole, just with the parting tool in the corner. That just gives your adhesive much better strength. Okay, I like how that turned out. Now the bottle brush burrows, usually this bark comes flying off and uh, this is on there pretty good, so I, I will usually glue that completely. So I want to come in from the side down near the bottom to uh, reduce it. Put the tail stock on. Use this as much as you possibly can. When you glue that, do you put the glue all over the bark or just where the bark meets the wood? Uh, I usually just do all the bark. The whole thing? Yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll glue the, the outer part. If I'm doing a, a little, real thin piece, like a eighth inch thick little bowl with this, yeah, I glue everything. Uh, I'll glue this side and then work up, and then when I get, say, a quarter inch, I'll glue it, do two cuts, I'll glue it again, do two cuts. So I take it down to an eighth inch thick or less with the bark on. So if you, if you do three cuts, that the bark will go flying. Now if something goes flying off, just step back and watch where it goes. Step away from the machine, because a lot of times you can get it and glue it right back on. Unless it's chocolate. Well, you can melt it. Yeah, you can melt it. Chocolate's very forgiving. Now I have a lot of bark thickness here and I don't think that looks as good as if I would shorten it up this high and, and there's less. Uh, these people from the, the shell show, 
that came to my studio today. They saw all my stands, and uh, <coughs> I made this one where I bent it back for a shell like this, where I can kind of hook it in, and, and that holds it very nicely. And you can display it all kinds of different ways. You can display other things on there, rocks and minerals and, and whatever. Yeah, necklaces. I, I've made jewelry stands out of this stuff that were, the stuff gets really big. We have got some like that. Down in Dania at uh, the famous park, Dr. Von D. Mizell Eula Johnson State Park, for, formerly known as John Lloyd. Formerly. I think it should be called Dania Beach State Park. It's just simple. We, we get a lot of this coral down there, but you find it all up and down the coast after a big storm. It's just lots of it around. It's not illegal to take it? No. Uh, if it's live, yeah. But, but it's it's usually, it's, it's but it, time it gets on the beach, the waves have beaten all the live stuff off of it, and it leaves the black skeleton. <clears throat> See the parting tool, I have it aiming up, not at dead center. Again, it connects my body and I'm going in with my body. You use a lot less energy that way. And these bottle brush barrels, if you uh, get one, pick it off the tree, you turn it wet, it's going to warp and just go crazy on you. They, they make really cool mushrooms. You turn a mushroom out of one of those wet ones and it just wrinkles and it'll bend over sideways. And they're, they're really neat. Yeah, and these people from the shell show came over and they have this big triton shell about that big. And they want, they're making a custom stand and they also had a uh, cowrie about that size. So I'm making a stand for their little shell. Now, if I would have looked out the door and saw they pulled up in a brand new silver Bentley, I would have charged them more money. <laughs> I didn't see that until they got out. <laughs> they say you were a little shell shocked. Yeah. Oh, you know that? Oh, Schedule him to come back next month. That's good. <laughs> I just want to have the base slightly undercut. I can check it with my straight edge here real quick. And, where what? Okay. And I think, 10 minutes? Piece of cake. Gluten-free cake. I'm just checking because these have bark inclusions in sometimes. And if you run in one, it's as thick as your finger, it can come breaking off. <coughs> okay, I'm down to about an eighth inch. So we're going to leave that at that. This bit here, I just grind off, sand off, take a gouge and cut it off. I can use my uh, technique that you were crazy about. That, oh, yeah. That, uh, well, I don't have that kind of center. The magazine was not a while now. Yeah, I, I don't have a, a thing. And if you're wondering, the tape is to keep the wood chips out of my pocket. All right, now this Gorgonia black coral makes great snowman arms. I mean, you got three arms out of this one. So, uh, real easy to do. You just need a little bit of wire, different consistencies, depending on the size of the coral. Like this bottom chunk will be snipped off for this one. 
but to hold a shell like this one, just take some wire, make sure it's got a good wrap around the base. Tell me to hold still when you need me to. You can use aluminum wire, steel wire is a little hard, electrical wire with or without the insulation works really well. It's like tying up braces on a bonsai. Yeah, it's just like doing a bonsai tree. <coughs> Wrap it around. Smaller wires for the smaller branches is fine. If you have a piece like this, you could take a long one and wrap there and go up this side and then that side. I'm just going to do one branch right now. And uh, you just do it to where it looks good to you, depending on what you want to make. I was make, taking some of these and making uh, some hair picks. And the part that goes through the hair was bent, but I would take a, a crotch like this, and some of them were uh, like this one had two or three of them that long, really thin, and I just tied them all up in knots and wove them in through there, each other. And that's the second one that sold, went right away. How are you now, keeping it moist? Uh, this? Yeah. I, I just threw it in a bucket of water. Just throw it in water for several hours or overnight. It's really pliable. You can tie this stuff in a knot. Uh, now let's say we have our shell. I, I can bend this around that way. I can bend this around that way. I can create a little loop-de-doo. I can curl the top around so it's hooking up over the shell. You, you can do a whole lot with this stuff. So I could bend this one down and out to hold something there. You can twist it around that way. It, it's really, see I can bend this one completely around there and this one around here and have something that'll completely cradle the shell in, in a lot of different ways. Or not just shells, like rocks and minerals. I had an idea for a hollow vessel where I was going to float the vessel in one of the coral heads, which has a big long arm, and come around and have the lid held by the coral right above the piece. That way it's kind of floating over it, and this is suspended up in the air, because if you look at this sitting on a table or a shelf, but then you see it again displayed up off, and that goes with some of our other wood turnings too. So, any quick questions on that? You want to leave it wired until it dries. Yeah, and something like this, it, it, it'll be dry tomorrow. Now, will it tend to break on you when it's dried and you're taking the wire off? But, yeah, it's a little more brittle, but, uh, see, see, like this one, I can tell has been creased right there, and I, I just cut those off. Sometimes a crotch will split on you and you can glue them back together. Go ahead and bend it and then just fill up that split with some black CA glue or black epoxy. And, uh, I, I use these for finials for a top of a piece. I'll bend this so it's all flat or, or straighten them out so they have a nice look to them and trim them a little bit. They, they make for really good finials too. And when you're unwiring it, it helps if you start at the end and hold it close to that end and unwire it. Move your hand down and unwire it. Yeah, yeah, just do that. Wire, move it, wire, move it. Like I would take then another skinnier piece for one of these little ones, start wrapping it down here where it's firm, and then move up and do this skinny piece carefully. Now I can 
position this one to come around any way I want, and this one any way I want. But once it's dry, it's firm, and it's a lot stronger than tree branches. Much, much stronger. And uh, this stuff polishes up really nice. You can just hit it on the, the white diamond buffing wheel, and it glosses up. Just really cool. They were making jewelry out of it, necklaces and bracelets and all kinds of things. Now David was talking about our club challenge. So what was the idea you had about doing a... To make the dome what they did there. Yeah. Just a round dome. It could be off center. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the center. Like, you know, like some this of these, is off center. Some of them are better off center. And then if you want, you can just put like a hollow or something in the top, maybe hold an egg. Yeah, you uh, can make to the hold something the in it. You've seen those. Uh, you can <clears> do something like that in the holder or maybe just even just some copper wire. You could use <coughs> copper wire and just make a little holder like he's doing with the... Uh, yeah, yeah, they got those wire trees where they wrap up the silver wire, copper wire, or, or yeah. whatever. Just something that demonstrates... Or chocolate. That you're able, you know, you can, do the curve, of chocolate. You do the dome, as it can be a hollow at the top of the mountain, hold something, or just you know, come up with an idea like that. Yeah. Then uh, you can go to the beach, and uh, the, the coral's there. Cindy and I went, and it was peak high tide, king tide. And I've never seen the, the, the water so high. And I thought, we're not going to find anything. And I got a picture of her with this big bag heaping full and she's got this pile under her arm and we got that in like 40 minutes because it was in the seawall. The water was lapping there, we were walking and then up the seawall we were just pulling out great big pieces of it. You're an environmental disaster. You're right. <laughs> well, we can get the plastic as we go. Good Especially after those burritos I had last week. <laughs> And, it, and if you don't like it, you can soak it back in water before you put finish on it. I usually just give it one coat of spray lacquer white or clear. But uh, it's real interesting stuff. And you can leave it in the water for days. Yeah. It's not going to hurt. So. It grew, it's grew in, in the ocean. ocean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to... And that's it. All right. What's next, Mr. President?